Today, I wanna to talk about Fight Club. Now look, I know, I know, the first rule is you aren't supposed to talk about it, but here's the thing. This is going to help you be a better cook, and I personally think that's worth violating the first rule. Remember all of the brutal punches in that movie? The breaking bones, the shattering teeth? What if I told you that those sounds you heard came from food? According to sound designer Ren Kleiss, there's a good chance that punch you hear is a baseball bat hitting a chicken filled with some walnuts. Punches in other movies might come from smashing cabbages, breaking bones, try celery stalks or bell peppers. Food makes a lot of noise, and Foley artists, the folks who add rich sound effects to movies, have been taking advantage of that fact since the early days of film to bring hyper-realistic sounds to the screen. Beyond smashing pumpkins, spied on my rage, I'm still just a rabbit cage. Sorry. Beyond beating up produce, listening to food can actually make you a better cook. Let's start off with a little game. I'm gonna play you sound clips of slicing up some vegetables using two different knives. And you are gonna tell me which knife is sharper. Here is the first one. And here is the second. So, which knife is sharper? If you said number two, you are correct. The edge of a dull knife has a harder time cutting and requires more force on your part to make its way through. Its duller edge crushes rigid cell walls instead of slicing through them. That crushing is loud business. And you all figured that out without even seeing the knife. Sound is that powerful in the kitchen. Here's another example. What if I told you that you can actually tell the difference between champagne and Prosecco simply by listening to them being poured? Here is champagne. And here is Prosecco. Pretty cool, right? Okay, last one. I bet you can tell the temperature of water by sound alone. Here is water sample A. And here is water sample B. Which one is hotter? That's right, B, and I know you all got that. Now the reason I did that little game show was because I love game shows, but also because I wanted to show you that you likely already have a pretty massive cooking sound library in your head, even if you aren't consciously aware of it. And so here's the key bit that we really care about. Turn that unconscious awareness into conscious observation and you open another dimension to cooking. Now, not like an alternate 1985 timeline. Your awareness in the kitchen increases massively, and you can multitask like you've never multitasked before. Let's go to the kitchen. A lot of what we are doing when we cook is manipulating water. And it turns out that water provides us with a huge range of sounds, which can provide us a ton of information. Here's what I'm talking about. When the wet exterior of a steak hits a hot pan, the sharp sizzle we hear is water boiling, turning to steam, and escaping from the oil slick surface. If you're starting with a hot sear on a steak straight out of the package, the sound will be loud and sharp, like this. If you air dried your steak overnight in the fridge, there will be less surface moisture and less sizzle it will sound like this. And if you're doing a cold sear, where you start in a room temperature skillet and then turn on the heat, steak cooking is going to be very quiet. Like, very, very, very quiet. Okay, let's keep cooking this air-dried ribeye because I really want lunch. I'm flipping it every 30 seconds to slowly build up a deep crust. With every flip, we hear a sizzle as water being driven out of the steak hits the hot fat and evaporates. I know that my pan temperature is hot enough to keep forming a crust. When I finish the steak by butter basting it, we get a whole slew of new sounds. When the butter's foaming subsides, I know that the water has been driven off and it is starting to brown. I can hear the sharp crackle of fresh thyme hitting the fat. It's time to spoon it over the steak. After resting the steak for 10 minutes, I treat it like 
two stakes. There's the eye muscle in the center and the cap around the exterior. The eye is finely textured, moderately marbled, and very tender. The cap, which is my favorite cut from the whole cow, is open textured, heavily marbled, and satisfyingly chewy. And every bite gets a boost of shallowy, tallowy brown butter sauce. Mm -mm -mm. Beyond steak cookery, water provides the difference in sound between sweating vegetables and sauteing them. When sweating, we want to soften the vegetables without any browning. Maillard browning reactions happen quickly at temperatures of 250 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. As long as there's water present in a pan, it won't go above 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So when we are sweating, there's ample moisture in the pan and the sound is muffled, very gentle. If you have your back to the stove, maybe prepping something on your cutting board and your sweating veggies all of a sudden sound louder, you've evaporated enough moisture that you've moved into the world of sauteing. The small amount of water left in the skillet is boiling, turning to steam and escaping the fat. You hear that classic sizzle. What do you do? You spin round and turn that heat down or spin round and add a splash of water to the skillet. Either move drops the pan temperature and prevents browning. Wow, thanks ears. Back in 2015, wok cooking expert and humanitarian Grace Young told my colleague Molly Birnbaum that she could be in a different room from the kitchen and tell if a stir fry was being properly cooked based on sound alone. Just think about that. In high heat wok cooking, the entire process is a series of different kinds of sizzles based on what just entered the wok. In a properly heated wok, adding mushrooms sounds like this. This is how celery sounds. Aromatics like garlic and ginger should sound like this. And meat, like this. Adding a lot of liquid can take a sharp sizzle to a low bubble. Moisture trapped in the wok has dropped the temperature significantly. But water doesn't just impact sweating, sauteing, and searing. It's also responsible for sounds when we cook stuff in pots. There's gotta be a better way to say that. Take risotto, for instance. Using those beautifully sweated onions, we toasted the rice and then started adding broth. When you first add a couple big ladles of broth to the pot, you hear lots of fine bubbles bursting at the surface. That's because the liquid surrounding the rice is thin, so it's easy for bubbles to rise to and then break the surface. When the risotto needs more stock, the bubbles are less frequent and they sound more like blubs. Hear that sound? That's your cue to add more broth. This applies to thick soups and purees as well. When tiny rapid bubbles give way to slow blubs, turn around and turn that heat down. So the next time you're in the kitchen, pay close attention to what you're hearing. Does your friend's knife need a good sharpening? Is that tomato sauce blubbing its way to a scorched bottom? And is your steak about to go from a sharp sear to a steamy sizzle because the heat's turned too low? Your ears are telling you a lot when you cook and here's what you get when you listen to them. And that's why this is how to eat with your ears. Thank you all for listening. A big shout out to Cook's Illustrated Senior Science Research Editor, Paul Adams, for his research into Foley artists and the very cool work that they do. Now, you have to go below this video and grab that recipe for butter-basted ribeye. It is so good. While you're down there, hit like and subscribe. And in the comments, I would love to know what you listen for in the kitchen and what it tells you. Thanks again. See you next time.